So, a couple years ago, I made a video detailing how I make a YouTube video on Linux. From doing the screen recording, editing, making the thumbnail, all the way to uploading it to YouTube. Now, since then, I've actually switched editing softwares. I used to use Flowblade Movie Editor, but because of a bug that made the program crash anytime I tried to make a crossfade, which made it basically unusable for my use case, I switched to Caden Live. And I found that while it was a whole new workflow to get used to, once I was used to it, I found I liked it better than Flowblade. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the processes that I use to edit my YouTube videos in Caden Live. I'm not only going to go over cutting out clips, which by the way makes up the bulk of my editing, but I'm also going to show you how to speed up clips, add pictures, add subtitles, and do crossfades, and also just general best practices for working in Caden Live. But enough talk, let's get right into the video. All right, so I've got my video here in my videos file that I'm going to demonstrate this with. It's my previous video covering the Arch install script in the Arch ISO. But anyway, I actually have a folder called Projects where I store all my video editing projects for YouTube, including the one for this very video, which you are watching right now. So I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to call it demonstration, since this is for demonstration purposes. And within that project folder, I like to make a project folder called clips, which is where I store my raw, unedited video files. But anyway, I'm going to take that video and move it into my clips folder just to get prepared, because I like to have all my raw video files in here. But anyway, I'm going to close out of my file manager and open up Caden Live. Let me full screen that and manage this so that way my project bin where all the files go is up here. I don't ever use this, so I just keep it on library, which is just blank. So what we do first is go up to this plus button, click on it, and then this will allow us to add a video or a photo. I'm just going to go to my project folder here, and then import that video, which I just moved into here. Let me switch this back to library. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom in real quick on this, and then I like to shrink this spacer down to one frame, and then zoom into the individual frame, and then drag that video just after this spacer, so my video starts after one frame. Now, if you don't do this, then if you try to do a fade in, Caden Live will actually automatically get rid of that when you close the project, even if you've saved it for some reason. But anyway, I'm gonna zoom out to about here, I like to do. Now, if you wanna add a fade in or fade out, all you do is just click on this green dot, and then I like to make it 15 frames or half a second in 30 frames per second. If you choose to work in 60 frames per second, then you have to make that 30. Same thing with the other end of the clip for the fade out, except it's a red dot. And by the way, when I'm actually working with the video and making my cuts, I like to work in insert mode since when you delete a clip that you want to cut out, then in this mode, the other clips will automatically go back to take up that space. Because otherwise, if you do it in normal mode, it won't automatically do that and then it'll just replace that clip that you deleted with blank space. But anyway, if you want to delete a certain section of the video, go to your cut tool, find the beginning of that segment, and then click on it. Same thing with the other end of the segment. And then you go back to your selection tool, select that segment, and then hit the delete key. And now that's gone. And by the way, you can undo or redo anything from the edit menu or by using these keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you want to speed up a certain section of the video, I'd still cut it, but instead of deleting it, what I do is I now change back to normal mode, right click on the clip, ungroup it, get rid of the audio clip because we don't really need that for a sped up clip. And by the way, if you did not switch to normal mode, then this audio clip would have come back here 
making the audio way out of sync. But anyway, now you right click on this video only clip and then click change speed. You can specify a percentage here or by dragging this slider or by setting a time here. I like to do it for five seconds. So let's do that and there we go. Another reason to use normal mode, you can drag the clip after that over here. Otherwise it'll just add blank space after your sped up clip until it gets to that point, which I'm sure you don't want for obvious reasons. And now before you get back to cutting, come back up here and switch back to insert mode. Now if you wanna have a smooth transition between clips, what you wanna do is switch back to normal mode and then drag the slider to where on the clip you want your crossfade to start. I generally do it 15 frames before the end of the clip, which in my case, I'm at 10 minutes, 33 seconds, and 17 frames. So I'm gonna change that to two frames. And then basically why I wanted to put the marker here is I can use the marker as a guide for where to put my video clip. And by the way, you can also use the marker as a guide for making your cuts if you wanna be really precise with them. But anyway, now just click this purple button here on the top clip, which will automatically add a crossfade. And basically what I do is I alternate between V1 and V2 for each of my video files that I want crossfades between. Just only thing you gotta keep in mind, if you're wanting to add a video clip here that you want to crossfade to, you just gotta keep in mind that you always add the wipe up at the top clip, since that's where video editors start from. They work from the top down, if that makes sense. Now if you want to add subtitles to your video, burned in subtitles, for example, you said something wrong and you want to correct yourself, all you do is go to the point where you want the subtitle to start appearing, then hit shift S on your keyboard, which will create a new subtitle. And then you can just add whatever text you want, say example subtitle, it'll do that. And then you can use this to drag in and out your subtitle clip to change where it ends. Now unfortunately there is no way to change the font or color or size. So if you want that kind of control you could even just use a photo editor like GIMP to generate that text as an image with a transparent background and then just add the image here. And by the way, I like to contract my subtitles line here because I don't really need to work with this all that often and nowhere near as often as my main video lines. Now, if you wanna add images on top of videos, all you do is just drag the photo onto a blank clip line that's above your main video to the point where you want it to begin appearing. And of course you can use this marker as a guide. And then there you go, it'll start appearing. And then same principle, you can use this to control where it ends. Now, by the way, before you place this down, you want to be sure you're in normal mode. Otherwise, if you try to do it in insert mode, it'll just place it at the very beginning of the clip line, which is not what you want. Now, if you don't want it to take up the entire screen, but just a part of it, just right click on it, go to insert a composition and click composite and transform. And then that'll allow you to zoom the image in and out at will, as well as move it around in the center here. Like, let's say I wanted it really tiny up here. I can do that. And of course, always remember that anytime you need to use normal mode, for whatever reason, before you get back to cutting, always remember to switch back to insert mode. Now, if you ever need more video or audio tracks above these for pictures or whatever, just right click on the top video track, click insert track, and you wanna insert one track above your top track, in this case V2. And by the way, if you need multiple, you can insert multiple here. And if you only need pictures or video, but no audio, you can click video track and that'll add a video only track. Or if you need just audio, but no pictures or video, you can do audio track for an audio only track. And if you need both audio and video, you do an AV track, which I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna insert one AV track above V2, and we can leave track name blank, since this is kind of like my track name, 
There we go, now we have V3 and A3. If you ever want to delete a track, just right click on that track and then click delete track. And you might want to also delete its accompanying audio track if you don't need that anymore, if you created it as an AV track. But anyway, let's go delete V3 and A3. There you go. All right, so now the very, very last thing I want to mention is that the insert mode will only push back clips from the same video. So. For example, if I do an edit here, it won't affect the position of anything here, which is why in Caden Live, you always want to do your edits in a linear fashion. But let's just say I had to make an edit over here after the fact for some reason, I would still cut it as usual, but instead of just deleting it in insert mode, like I usually do, I'd switch to normal mode, then delete it, and then use the spacer tool to drag it back over here, and then that will affect the position of everything from the clip where you put your spacer on, onward, including this other video clip here. Or if I had a lot of edits to make down here, I might just make them in insert mode, and then use the spacer tool over here once I'm done. But anyway, that's pretty much all my editing procedures that I do for my YouTube videos. As you can see, my video edits are relatively simple. After all, I'm not doing any kind of color correction or anything, and I kind of do that on purpose so that way I can produce these videos in a relatively short amount of time, which is what you want for YouTube. But anyway, one thing I should mention, every so often you might want to save your project by going up to File and then clicking Save, and I like to call mine Project dot Caden live and the dot Caden live is so that way the operating system knows that it's a Caden live project and it should open the file with Caden live and for some reason Caden live doesn't automatically add this extension I'm really not sure why that is but anyway I just put this at the root of my project folder and then save that and then if I were to close this project I can always pick up where I left off just by opening this file and by the way this file, this project.cadenlive.srt file, Cadenlive will create this if you have subtitles in your video, like what I have here. This is just a store of subtitles. I'm really not sure why it can't be stored here, but whatever. But anyway, once you're finally done and you're ready to render out the finished video, all you do is just go up to project, then click render, and then I like to export my video as an mp4 to the root of my project folder, and then rather than call this project.mp4, I like to call it the title of the video, since when you go and upload the video to YouTube, YouTube will actually autofill the name of the video file that you are uploading into the title field. But anyway, now you're gonna click save, and then you click render to file and it'll start rendering. Now I don't actually want to render this right now because that'll just suck up resources, which I need to do this screen recording. And that's how I edit my YouTube videos in Caden Live. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.